Welcome to another Orbiter Spaceflight Simulator video. And in this recording, I'm going to spend a little bit more time with the upcoming version of Orbiter, which is currently Revision 9, and tentatively, at least, it's going to be called Orbiter 2015. Now, in one of the previous videos that you may or may not have had a chance to see, I was on the moon, and I lifted up the Delta Glider coasted uh, about 400 kilometers, I think it was, over to Fremora, and then landed. I spent a little bit more time playing around with some of that configuration, and I also put the Deep Star Lander into my Orbiter 2015 beta installation. So let me switch camera views here, and then we'll take a look at things. This is the uh, Lander that comes with the Deep Star 2.1 and I actually didn't install the whole Deep Star vessel and everything, I just I just did the lander and it's sitting here at Fremora, basically where I had the Delta Glider but I thought it'd be kind of fun to use this vessel which is, uh, you know, not as sophisticated as the Delta Glider, even though the Delta Glider is kind of primitive but this thing is even more primitive, it doesn't even have a main engine um, all you basically have is a hover so I thought it'd be kind of fun to play around with that. And I also went through the configuration files for each of those landing sites from the AMZO add-on, and I took out the tile that was causing sort of that invisible, or at least transparent, layer to, it kind of almost looked like a, like a layer of clouds that was floating above the landing site, and I went through the uh, <clears throat> configuration file and took out that tile so that that's no longer going to be a, a thing for us. Now, I'm going to go from Fremora to whatever that base over there is called, or whatever that landing site's called, and I'm choosing that one because it's pretty close by, and I and, and because this vessel isn't <clears throat> doesn't have the capacity of the Delta Glider, I want to do something closer. So let's target that place, which is uh, Pro... I don't even know... something. I also found that burn time calculator, the old version, the like uh, the one that's been around for several years, 2.32, I think it is, it actually works with Orbiter 2015 beta, so I may use that. We'll see. All right, so the plan here, uh, we're going to lift up from Fremora, and we're going to try to stay pretty close to the ground, again, just for the fact that it's cool, and go over to Pro. Procrellarum, <laughs> whatever that place is called, which is 180 kilometers away. Now, it's mostly west, and I'm currently facing west, but now as I'm looking, I'm kind of noticing there aren't really, there isn't really much in the way of mountains going that way, so hopefully it still looks good. We'll see. All right, let me just uh, form a plan of action. Let me go ahead and bring up base sync, and we're going to target... Ugh, Pro Celerum, something like that. And apparently if I were to go in a straight line, I guess I would be uh, 18 kilometers off. I don't know. We'll, we'll worry about that in a minute. But I'll use that to help me stay aligned with the base. And I guess because of the fact that the author of Amzo did bother, did go ahead and include base frequencies will take advantage of that, which I kind of almost feel is cheating, but we'll do it anyway. So we're going to use that radio transmission to help us find the location e more easily. And maybe on maybe if I do another one of these, I won't do that, because I, I kind of really do feel like it's cheating. There wouldn't be a radio beacon at these locations, I don't think. So there we go. And we can see now you know, the, it, we're still within range of that beacon, too, which is kind of nice. So if we lift up and go that away, we'll get there. Now, again, we don't have main engines. Um, all we have is hover. So when we, when we want to go forward, we actually uh, have to just basically lean forward and to, to go, uh, yeah, pitch over, I should say, in order to go forward. That's how that's going to work. So let's give it a shot and see how we do. Let's uh, hover up, and very shortly after applying hover, 
I think it's also a really good idea to turn on that level horizon <clears throat> so that you don't get out of balance. And before I do that, let me also bring up Surface MFD. There we go. That way I can keep an eye on my respective velocities and all that. All right, hover up. And you can see how as soon as I started to hover, it just wanted to tilt like that. Okay, we're on our way up. Let me kill that rotation. And so we're moving up at 3 meters a second. Let's get rid of some of the hover now. A little bit more. Just to kind of get, get our sense of how we are before we start moving. And it's a little unfortunate that there isn't better graphical representation here around the ground because it's kind of hard to even tell that we're going up or down. Okay, now I'm going to turn off the level horizon because we can't be level because we, we can't, we don't have main engines to go forward so we have to lean. So I have to turn off the level and I'm going to pitch over. And I just want to make sure that I'm actually going toward the base. Yeah, it looks like the yellow indicator is indicating that I'm going straight forward. Because it could possibly be that you'd be rotated the wrong direction and you could be going, you know, off center. So I, I'm still climbing. I want to make sure I'm going up. Because as I, as I lean forward, as I pitch forward, I'm applying less thrust down. And if I pitch forward too much, I could potentially drop and hit the ground. So i got to watch out for that. Now we do have a ways to go. 180 kilometers is no super short distance so let's get on it it's going to lean forward more the more we lean forward then the more thrust that is being applied so i'm still climbing at 13 meters a second pitching forward a little bit more and you notice as i as i pitch the more i pitch forward the less vertical acceleration i have which makes perfect sense so i'm going to pitch uh i think i'm you know, I have I have sufficient altitude. I think I'm at about a about a yeah about a kilometer, and I'm still climbing. So I'm going to put almost all of my move my forward uh, going to put almost all of my engine thrust into forward movement. So now I'm basically laying over, looking at the ground. Kind of get that perspective there, because all my thrust is now going out the back. See if I can find a better, better camera angle. And I guess that's eh, that's probably the best one right there. But I gotta watch it again because I'll I will descend. In fact, I am descending now. I'm losing altitude at 16 meters a second. So let's pitch uh, back a little bit or more towards. Actually, I'm descending quite fast. So let me lean enough. There we go. That's better. And now the velocity vector is above the horizon again, so I don't have to worry about hitting the ground. And I'm going to lean forward just to get myself moving at a pretty good rate. And there probably is a good balance here where you can lean forward just enough uh, to make sure that you're not descending like I am right now. My vertical acceleration is almost zero and my vertical speed is uh, positive. So that's kind of how we look at the moment. Moving at 400 meters a second. We don't want to go too fast. A um, mm, little bit faster than that, maybe. About 500 meters a second sounds good to me. So I'm going to move, s slowly rotate back so that I'm level. And at the same time, remove some of the hover power. And now we can basically coast. Now I just have to make sure I keep enough hover applied so that I don't drop. And we're moving straight toward, toward the target location. Take a look outside here. I guess now that I'm kind of uh, heads up, it's better if I use this other camera angle. 
you know, maybe not the most exciting ride across the lunar surface just due to the fact that there aren't, there's not a lot of mountainous terrain in the way. In fact, I think I'm going to go forward a little faster even. Let me think about that, because I've only got 100 kilometers left to go. Because hmm. normally when you're at orbital, well, the other thing is these engines aren't nearly as powerful. So here's where I need to bring in burn time calculator. I'm going to have to switch engines because there is no main engine, so we're going to go to hover. And I'm going to say, I need to eliminate 511 meters a second. How long is that going to take using the full power of the hover engines? It's going to take me about 28 kilometers, it looks like. So yeah, we can go forward a little faster, although that, that's ticking by awfully fast. We shouldn't, we shouldn't go too crazy with it. I think I'll lean forward just enough to sort of slowly, you know, increase the velocity just a touch. Not not much at all, though. Just basically enough to keep myself balanced so that I'm not dropping, not necessarily climbing either, because three kilometers is apparently plenty high enough. Now that distance is 66, but... We are accelerating just a touch. So let's say if we had 550 meters a second, so we need 32 kilometers to slow down. And again, that's if we use the full power the whole time. So we'll probably start braking a little earlier than that. And that's coming up pretty quick. So yeah, yeah, we definitely didn't need to really think about Now I am getting a little off-center though, so now I also have to take into consideration the alignment. And that's tricky in this one. Alright, I'm going to start rotating into braking position, which is going to basically be lying on my back looking at the sky. <laughs> full power on the hover. Might have even been a touch late on that. And I want the majority of the engine thrust to be facing basically the prograde position so that I'm braking. And let me kind of look at the external view to get a sense of what that looks like. Basically like that. And uh, keep in mind too, we are Sometimes these camera angles are so goofy. Uh, we have to watch that we don't fall because we don't have hardly any thrust going down, so we're dropping. You can see I'm losing 36 meters a second, so I need to rotate a bit this way to sort of start offsetting some of that vertical speed. And I also need to rotate a little bit in order to get into alignment, and I'm trying to think of how I need that to work exactly. Probably going to overshoot the landing site a bit. Okay, I, I rotated the wrong way, so I need to rotate the other way. Now you can see the yellow arrow getting a little bit closer to the green. Horizontal speed's down to 100 meters a second. Boy, that's tricky. All right, let me get rid of the hover and just get situated here. Almost there.
Kind of overshot a little bit there. Not too bad though, really. But I'm clearly a little disoriented. Get rid of the hover. Actually disoriented, that's not the word I was looking for. Out of alignment is what I meant. Okay, so... Translation. Rotation. It's a lot more tricky to do this than it is. Okay, now... Lean back a little bit. Apparently that's the wrong way. Oh yeah, right. It's backwards. You need to lean forward, rather. Pitch forward, I should say. And that will eliminate that velocity. I go level. Oops. Translation. I have to switch it to translation. And I can kind of translate out the difference that at least I'm going in the right direction. Two kilometers out from the target. Rotation. Okay. Let's get rotated forward. So. Not real graceful, but... Now I need to eliminate that vertical speed. I just notice it's kind of getting out of control. Okay, and I don't want to go forward any faster than that. Okay. And slow things down. See the velocity vector coming up now. And start kind of leaning back, pitching up a little bit to maybe get rid of some of this velocity, forward velocity. Oops. Boy, it's so easy to just hit the wrong key when you're sort of in this position. Translation. And we're almost to the landing site. Rotation. Slow down a little bit more. One more hover to offset the descent. Okay, we're slowed down now as much as we want to be in terms of the horizontal speed. One thousand. I just have to make sure I don't hit the ground hard. Okay. Translation. few dozen meters to go in terms of forward, but if I don't hit exactly dead center, that's not a problem. Just want to make sure I don't hit the ground too hard and crash, although I don't think this particular vessel has any type of collision detection, so... Don't want to climb. Translating forward a little bit because I still have 80 meters to go forward. And now we'll just kind of drop a little bit. There we go. I think I think I got it pretty well under control now. Just gets a little confusing when you're not used to the tail sitter. Okay, 
get rid of some of that forward velocity. And we're pretty much right over the landing site. So now I won't worry so much about the horizontal situation. Kind of come to a dead stop here if we can. There we are, we're at zero meters a second. All right, let's drop. fast. 100. Uh-oh. We're in trouble. 50, 40, 30. Okay, I think we're going to be all right. That was a close call, though. 29 meters to go. I don't actually know what the altitude is for this particular craft. The Delta Glider and I think the XR2 also are about 2.5 meters when you're on the ground. I wish we could look outside and see better, but... I think I heard 10 meters a second ago. Turn off the level horizon so we don't bounce So when we hit the ground, or when we touch down, because we'll have a nice soft touchdown here in a moment. See, it says we're eight meters up. Okay, we're on the ground. Okay, yeah. So the altitude, and I should have paid attention to this before I ever lifted off, the altitude of this particular craft, when the landing skids are on the ground, you'll, you, your eyesight, basically, I guess, is at 8.3 meters, which is quite a bit higher than the standard Delta Glider. The standard Delta Glider is like 2.5 meters. So that's that, and it also kind of looks like the graphics are showing the skids are sort of underground. It's, well, that wasn't quite as fun as I expected it to be. Um, I thought there would be, I thought it would be a better graphical experience to get to look at the 3D terrain, but there just wasn't that many hillsides between between the two landing, uh, between Framora and here. Maybe if I had gone that way or something. So, anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you liked having a look, an, another look at Orbiter 2015 Beta. And if you're interested, uh, check out the video that I made on how to install all of this stuff so that you can uh, play around with it yourself. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike the video if you disliked it. Links are in the description down below, and I will see you in the next video.